opens with a woman and her son packing up and trying to get away in their car. But they are attacked by zombies and killed. This was a flashback sequence as our hero, Rinchard, wakes up in his semi-fortified home. In a last-ditch effort to contain the infection, he sets bombs at various locations throughout the city. One day, he receives a transmission from a woman named Brianna. She tells him she needs to get to Antioch, a survivor community. Not long after, two men, Mike and Vincent, show up at Rinchard's home, claiming to be from Antioch. They force him to cooperate. The trio manage to find Brianna and get out of the city. However, one of the men dies, and the other shoots Rinchard, leaving him for dead. Rinchard recovers and goes to free Brianna before the city explodes. Yes, this is an Asylum movie. If you don't know who Asylum is, allow me to fill you in. Asylum is a film production company that specializes in what are called mockbusters. These are the type of movies that are rushed into production so they can be released around the same time as a major Hollywood blockbuster film. While Michael Bay made Transformers, Asylum made Transmorphers. When Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter was released, Abraham Lincoln vs. Zombies was unleashed around the same time. Many other titles just speak for themselves. Snakes on a Train, The Da Vinci Treasure, Almighty Thor, Atlantic Rim. They gave us the Sharknado series. They also did Nazis at the Center of the Earth, which I will openly admit that I liked, even more so than the film they tried to capitalize on, Iron Sky. With I Am Omega, The Asylum brought this film to audiences one month before the Will Smith starring I Am Legend, in the hopes to capitalize on that film's at a anticipation. All the while, it lifts some of the title from the Omega Man. Richard Matheson was uncredited, which I'm sure he's totally fine with. The scale of the film is as small as one would expect, and with a minimal cast. Four main actors, and maybe seven or eight actors dressed as zombies. Asylum does what they can with limited resources. Director Griff first started with Asylum before finding a steady career in Hollywood. Early roles include Dead Men Walking and Transmorphers. Mainstream acting credits had him in films like Green Lantern, Battleship, Trumbo, and The Magnificent Seven remake. He's been a writer, producer, editor, second unit director, and cinematographer. He knows his way around a movie set. Jeff Mead played Vincent, but also wrote the script. He manages to take I Am Omega and deviate it from the Matheson source material. I'll give him props for trying to make this film stand on its own. Mead wasn't above putting in some cheeky references to Omega Man. Uh, for example, the moment when Wrenchard reacts to a radio going off. There is no radio! I heard that before. Uh, oh yeah. There is no phone ringing, damn it! I'm well aware that Mark DeCascos has his following. A Double Dragon, The Island of Dr. Moreau, Brotherhood of the Wolf, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and the upcoming John Wick Chapter 3. In I Am Omega, he's not a captivating enough lead for me. He likes the qualities that we see in the previous main characters. There was a sense of calculation in Vincent Price, a determination in Charlton Heston, and a charisma in Will Smith. He does his best with what he's given, but it's not good enough. He shines in action roles and as a supporting player. I appreciate that Asylum allows people to get their foot in the door when it comes to filmmaking. That said, I Am Omega is the weakest offering when it comes to adaptations of Matheson's I Am Legend. I imagine if you're a diehard DeCascos fan, you'll be able to sit through this, but this film will be a test of your patience.